Intel has completely lost its marvels. Their newest presentation contains the unhinged rantings of a company now resembling a deranged lunatic. Intel says that AMD is selling snake oil in its latest slide deck. It also has a photo of a greasy used car salesman peddling old as new. And somehow they're not talking about their own 14900K. Yes, this is an official Intel slide deck. This level of petty is coming from a company whose market cap is $178 billion. For now, anyway. Intel has some actual points in this deck, but the way they attempt to make them is misleading and we think completely betrays Intel's actual concern. As AMD finds its way into more and more mobile and handheld devices, Intel now apparently is so desperate that it has to build its argument purely on semantics alone and whether or not a part came from this year. And that's while overlooking that they're getting their asses handed to them by a 5800X 3D built on architecture and naming from 2020 originally, because the year is irrelevant. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and the CryoSheet graphene pads. These CryoSheets are molecularly stacked in the Z axis to encourage vertical direct thermal transfer from the IHS to the cooler. CryoSheet pads are made to be easily applicable for a thermal interface and completely avoid paste dryout because it's not paste. It makes them particularly useful for long service life systems with minimal maintenance. They come in multiple sizes for suitability on the most common laptops and desktop CPUs, and you can learn more at the Thermal Grizzly Cryo Sheets at the link in the description below. And we're not joking about this presentation. In fact, we checked multiple times to see if it was real. So here Vitaly and I were in San Francisco, and Intel put out this slide deck, and we checked to see if it was real. Maybe their servers had been compromised, but no. Intel actually uploaded that, and they meant it. Apparently, the joke was on all of us. Intel slide deck is called Core Truths, and it starts strong. The title on the page says, Core Truths, how the latest technology is not always what it seems. And the first slide says it's, quote, a playbook that enlightens customers on how the latest technology is not always what it seems. And then the second slide says, why the latest doesn't always mean the latest. In fact, if you control F the word latest in this deck, you'll see that it comes up 19 times. That's Apple levels of obsession with new and shiny. They talk about how the latest isn't always the latest, how the latest is the best, and how the latest isn't the best, and how the best matters, but the latest doesn't matter, but the latest matters. They also talk about how an R5 isn't the latest, but an i5 is the latest, even though that's literally not even how Intel's own naming works, because i5s don't stop existing in current year plus one. Intel also talks about how their CPUs are the latest, about how marketing CPUs as the latest is a thing, the latest generation or equivalent, latest, latest, latest. Hey Google, define semantic satiation. According to Wikipedia, semantic satiation is a psychological phenomenon in which repetition causes a word or phrase to temporarily lose meaning for the listener, who then perceives the speech as repeated meaningless sounds. Latest. This entire thing comes across as user benchmarks rantings. Except it's first party. It might not be an astroturf. So once again, Intel has named one of its competitors' products more than its own in its own slideshow. All well, the competition in the competition, competition, the nearest competitor. All well, the competition. The AMD 4800U is on the left, and the Intel 11th gen platform is on the right. Over the Ryzen 4800U, Ryzen 4800U system versus AMD's 4800U. AMD 4800U system. The AMD 4800U is on the left, and the Intel 11th gen core system is on the right. Intel is trying to do the job of the public and the media. It's actually a job we've already done. We complained about AMD's names back when they had the decoder ring to define their naming and terminology. I'm going to do a, a, a 7, which is a 2023, a Ryzen 9, so 7, 9. Okay, that makes no sense because it's a 1. <laughs> so there's a 1 on here. So obviously, I don't be confused because like this CPU I just made cannot exist because you would never have a Ryzen 9. They have the same problem. It's actually been a lot worse over the years, for a lot longer. And here we have Intel's target audience. Sir, 
what did you think of the present, sir? What, the presentation, what did you... Okay. All right. I have to find another one. Halfway through its slideshow, Intel said, the future of education and learning depends on the latest technology. They say, quote, but the most important is that the students are getting the best performance from the latest technology. In a separate slide, though, apparently trying to use its men in black memory wipe technology in between the slides, Intel also said, quote, latest doesn't mean better. While searching for comparable laptops online, John notices that 13th gen are the latest. So this is what he will compare with. In his research, he also sees the latest AMD 7000 series. So he considers AMD's latest gen too. In this situation, latest doesn't always mean better performance or product experience. Intel, what are you doing? Intel spends the whole deck talking about how the latest is the most important because it's hyper fixated on AMD's confusing naming, which is a valid point, yes. But then it turns around and says, but people keep choosing an older AMD part because the latest isn't the most important, the performance is. It's basically just saying we can't compete with AMD's 2019 parts. Whether or not that's true, is irrelevant because this entire deck is trying to bash AMD's marketing, but somehow simultaneously manages to mismarket Intel's product into a worse and more compromised position. Like, how do you do that? To us, the whole thing just seems desperate and sad. Intel isn't arguing on the merits of its technology and it's instead focusing on the name. Well, okay, Intel, you care about what's in a name so much? Let's talk about it. Look, Intel, we're tired. We've been traveling all day. We're filming all these different videos, but I have to thank you because nothing gives me more energy than this kind of marketing. So in 2015, Intel launched its 14 nanometer i7 5775C, which it followed up with a Skylake 6700K 14 nanometer part. Then in 2016, it launched its i7 6950X 14 nanometer CPU with 10 cores. And then in 2017, it launched its i7 7700K 14 nanometer part with four cores and eight threads. I'm going somewhere with this. In 2017, it launched Coffee Lake 14 nanometer parts, followed by the Coffee Lake Refresh 9900K on 14 nanometers in 2018. Then in 2019, it launched the 10980XE 14 nanometer CPU, and in 2020, it launched another one. That was the 10900K with 10 cores. And then in 2021, the best one yet, the i9 11900K, which reduced the core count from the prior 10900K to eight. The point is if Intel wants to talk about confusing names and marketing and being misleading, this is the place to start. The whole, we're gonna ship 14 nanometer parts and rebrand, rebrand and refresh things and append pluses to numbers. That's where you start with that discussion. They're talking about how the AMD part in question is a 2019 part, 2019 technology. That part got refreshed. So the part that's being discussed is a 7520U, which is four Zen 2 cores, but they shrunk them to six nanometers. And then it's got LPDDR5 support. So this is already a, it's a refresh. And if Intel is going to start bashing AMD like this over refreshes, then Intel, we need to talk about how fresh that coffee is because Coffee Lake got refreshed, Skylake got refreshed uh, about 18,000 times, and now we're on Raptor Lake refresh. Names aren't the only thing that Intel spoke about though. They kind of talked about performance, not sensibly, but it's there. So Intel's benchmarks in between telling us which processor goes with which age group for some reason, also represented music editing as the time required to convert an MP3 to a MIDI. They also judge editing performance for photos as a singular lens correction filter out of literally hundreds of workloads that a photo editor might use. That's the only one that made the cut. And best of all, they mention principal technologies and how they pay them to be tested. It shows sort of a, an astounding lack of self-awareness. It's actually impressive because if you don't remember, that's the group that Intel paid to turn half of AMD's cores off and benchmark it against Intel parts and then release their review of their own processor's performance 
before the embargo lift for independent reviewers. So they gag ordered everyone who was reviewing that part, and then they released their own benchmark, wherein they compare against AMD's products with half of the cores turned off. Not really sure this is the place for Intel to be talking about misleading marketing. But let's come back to this insane slide. We don't know what any of this means. First of all, they define the vertical direction as improving in multitasking, then sit an i9 at the top for esports, which is at the top of the multitasking stack, but is also something that once you turn 15, you need to graduate to and grow up and buy an i9 or something. We're not really sure what this slide means. The slide seemingly assigns an i3 to programming and digital content creation with Celerons reserved for, we guess, literal babies. And this entire page makes it look like it was part of some kind of middle school project by the kid of an executive. And we're embarrassed for Intel that it even exists. This is some of the worst explanation for which Intel CPU to buy we've ever seen. And that's all coupled in with things like talking about not all cores give you the best performance, which we assume is a play at E cores or something, and oddly threatening phrases like, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> I'm shocked that it exists and genuinely thought that this was like a mistake. Because Jeremy from our team spotted it, sent it over, and uh, we're traveling. And I replied to him and I said, is that real? They had some other weird stuff in here too. So plan for the full lifespan of the device. Uh, they talk about student computing needs becoming complex or something and about as students progress in school, gradually developing their higher order thinking and skills over time, their learning activities place increasing demands on their computers. Slide 30, if you're following Alon at home, talks about benchmarks being real and representative. So we're, we're back to this. There was a whole benchmarks not being real thing Intel did a couple years ago. That was not good. And then this one says problem statement. New CPUs and SOCs in the market make it difficult to compare across architectures and operating systems. Most cross-platform benchmarks are synthetic and not based on real usages. Solution. Crossmark provides a cross-platform benchmark that is based on real and relevant usages to compare across iPad, MacBook, Windows. I don't even know what this is about anymore. Are we like into some, what is, we're into some crossmark thing now. I don't know what this is in Intel. This is like, this seems so weirdly bitter about something that they're not just naming. <laughs> so anyway, that's the video. We had other stuff we were doing and we made this instead or in addition to. Uh, and that's because this is one of the most asinine, insane first party sets of slides I have ever seen in this industry, I cannot believe it came out of Intel. Intel completely fumbled its composure. This is not like Intel historically at all. And they don't even have an audience. They're talking about benchmarking, about school applications for basically children. And then they're also talking about requisition managers who buy hundreds of thousands of computers. So I don't know who the audience is, but uh, hopefully you found that entertaining, or at least, at least us finding a way to film a very important and critical video while we got to explore some of San Francisco. So thanks, Intel. Thanks, Steve.